that's my goal, to at least not damage this rig the first week we have it. <laughs> We're ready to take this bad boy home. Is it a boy or a girl? Good night. This is scary. Oh my goodness. We're less junk, not no junk. We're gonna be sticking in the road, aren't we? First, uh, our first official ding. We're Marissa, Nathan, Hensley, and JJ. We sold our house in 2015 and moved into an RV full time to live a life of less junk, more journey. Life is a journey. Let go and get going. What is up, fellow journeyers? We are packing up to get out of here. This is uh, learning where all the new latches are, all the things that need to be secured and turned. And how's that? Did you get the fridge? Ooh, red light means locked, I guess. Yeah, Hensley okay. told me that. So. Oh, okay. All right, so we got that. <laughs> Still totally digging. I mean, even with this fifth wheel here, I mean, like, ah, it's all about oh, the lights, man. All about it the feels, windows. It feels like we're at home. Like, it is just amazing it was a great night we the kids did awesome transitioned well slept well so we're ready to take this bad boy home is it a boy or a girl i, feel I like, don't know we're still figuring I feel out like it's a girl i feel like it's a girl I feel like it's a girl it's just too pretty <laughs> it's too pretty to be a boy <laughs> yeah so last night uh we're still in the general rv parking lot they gave us electric and uh so we're about to head out from here south i don't know three and a half google hours but that's how I call everything, but it's gonna be at least four in this fifth wheel uh, to get down south to around Cincinnati, which is a halfway point for us to get back to Tennessee. But uh, it did well. We uh, we had the electric, but we don't have our small electric heaters we like to use. We did use the electric fireplace. We used the propane heat to go along with that. Everything's been like it should in the RV. Uh, that's part of why we made the decision to stay here the first night was to really take our time and start flipping the switches and turning the things off and on. And it's not a bad idea. It's an even better idea to do a shakedown trip and then come right back. But it's a dead of winter. Like we're just ready to go south, <laughs> somewhere south from here. So we'll do a shakedown. We'll probably consider our shakedown to be going from Tennessee to Florida in January. will probably be our official shakedown of this. And then if something happens, that's the good thing about General RV. They also have locations in Florida. So we can still get stuff figured out and fixed down there. I think we're good in here. There's nothing much worse than having a maiden voyage and like really jacking something up. But I th think we're good. <laughs> We've been living out of trash bags pretty much. We're trying to guess if we think that stuff up top is going to be okay or not. <laughs> Just don't know. <laughs> Dude, that's smooth, babe. If you're going to mess up, mess up now, slides. Not getting in there. <laughs> Do a little walk around inspection on the slides, make sure they all came in like they needed to. I think we are good. This is similar to our open ranch here. Usually I would push hitch height, but it's not gonna remember my hitch. I didn't drop it off, so. Well, first time doing retract all is scaring me. It's going all the way down right here. Good night. That's scary. Oh my goodness. <laughs> wow. Uh, I don't know why it has to do that. And we honestly still have not gotten down to the bottom of why it does that. I don't know if it's a difference between the hydraulic leveling versus the electronic leveling we had before in our open range, but hitting retract all in our open range did not lower the front jacks to where the RV was doing like a, a downward dog position or cowboy or whatever that RV is doing, like <laughs> freaking me out. So when you buy a new RV, they give you a bag of paperwork, but I could not find any paperwork specifically on the leveling, but I did find this in the Grand Design Owner's Manual. And um, yeah, this doesn't, isn't even our exact panel. So I don't know exactly how accurate most everything is, but <laughs> I did find on here, the thing to me that maybe stands out the most is in the bottom with an asterisk, because maybe they've answered this before. It says that for any reason you need to retract the landing gear, press and release, retract, which is retract all, and then press and hold front. So maybe I was supposed to press and hold front to keep the front jacks down while the rest of the jacks retracted. I will find out and I will let you guys know. Let's get back to the video. All right, we're hooked up. It took a little longer than I would have liked for that have taken. <laughs> this uh, slider hitch has to be like custom adjusted each time. 
Well, not each time, just this one time to fit this pin box. Okay, I know earlier I said that this is too pretty and needs to be a girl, but I mean, look at the outside with that full body paint. I mean, it's almost like maybe it's just like this tough guy on the outside, but like sensitive on the inside. I don't know. Tell me what you guys think. You know, we've never named an RV and I've always wanted to, so maybe we need to name this RV. How's it roll. feel? Feels good. I haven't really gotten to feel it. Didn't squat it that much. Um, the hitch weight's really not too much different on this one than the other. I think 200 pounds more. We don't have the washer dryer and all the stuff in it. But anyways, didn't squat too much. I'm curious to see how it does towing. We're not gonna have that much stuff. No, no. We're Marissa. less junk, more junk. Yeah, yeah. We're less junk, not no junk. I need to get rid of more junk. It's a process though, so don't get discouraged. I have the same overwhelming thoughts. Nathan is awesome at the downsizing part. And honestly, that's what's exciting about getting a new rig and changing is I actually look forward to that process. I know it's gonna be tough, but it's just kind of freeing getting rid of some of the, the extra weight that you don't even notice you carry around sometimes. Take a little longer than our open range looks like. We're gonna be sticking in the road, aren't we? Well, they're both going at the same time. <laughs> so maybe I can stop them here in a second. Uh, now we can't get the fridge open if it's there. Uh, yeah, we're out of the road. All right, let's go, buddy. What do you think, huh? What are you eyeing about, huh? We're back in the RV. What do you think? I don't even know where the lots are in here. <sighs> Yeah, we looked out, there's a Chick-fil-A right next to the Walmart. <laughs> that is what you call a win. Switches, this is the main one, which this is smart, I like this. You come in, you flip that main switch, and you've got all the hall lights and all the main lights up top in here, which is pretty good for most any situation, especially when we have that much light coming in. Oh, you two look sweet. <laughs> you know, as far as the slides, and I knew this, this is the way the hydraulic slides work. So the open range had a wire-based system slide. So on that one, we had a separate slide switch for every single slide which was nice because you get to a walmart and it's like we're gonna do just the two slides in the middle or whatever on this one they're all three kind of on the same system hydraulic pump and so this slide this slide and the, the mid bunk slide are all on this switch and then this switch is for the bedroom because it's a different slide system it's the um Schwintech, I think maybe is what they call it. So it's a separate system that has its own motor. And so it's on a different switch. There is a way to disable slides and only pull one slide out. But for our situation, especially on this one, this is just the quickest way to do it. I'll show that at some point in some video. A Little bit more work than the open range as far as having full control of which slides go out and how far they go out too. Like if I just wanted this slide going halfway out and it's not the last slide, not a deal breaker, not a huge deal, but that's just a part of having hydraulic slides versus like the wire system that's on the open range. Even the Walmart view is beautiful here. <laughs> we got it. We got a panoramic Walmart view here. <laughs> <laughs> I know these windows make any view pretty nice to have. Like, cause just feeling all this sunlight and just seeing what's around you, mm -hmm. honestly, no matter what it is. And if you didn't want to see it, then we could just pull the shades down. Cause I'm sure there are sometimes you don't want everybody seeing in. Can you see from the outside? Do you During know? the day, it's not going to be bad. Now, yeah. If we're in here at night boondocking, or if we're staying in Walmart at night, like we'd have all these shades down because I could totally see in here with the lights on. Now, as far as the way this toes, oh, one more thing we noticed, um, which just wasn't too bad. I was worried about how adjustable this was or how long it took so i love this it keeps the rv from shaking when you step on i mean everything's going to this system for a reason but you can just use this little release right here but i had it it was still too high and so this was sticking up more than it should and maybe our first uh our first official ding or something like that but this kind of caught because this was angled up too much it caught the door just a little bit right here so you got to have that down and pretty level or the door is going to catch it going in and out on that even though it's down so I, all i did was lower that back down it's flush we're good to go everything else as far as the toe looks uh the <laughs> truck definitely needs a bath i'm grateful that this is not getting a ton of salt i'm still gonna wash it like crazy when we get back in the truck for sure my goodness 
If you want to see full specs on this one at least, 3,200 pounds of cargo. It's a heavy RV. I think dry 14.7 is the dry weight. We upgraded to the 8K axles, and then we also upgraded to the hydraulic disc brakes. So it breaks. The braking is awesome on this. And we get the extra storage capacity by upgrading those axles. So this is 13 feet, five inches tall. So it's seven inches taller than our open range. But man, it shows just looking at the side of it, like it looks so much taller than that open range. And this is the reason if you're picking out a truck for your RV. Now, if you're hundred percent in, you've researched for years, you know, maybe you, you get a single rear wheel because we could have towed that open range with a single rear wheel and been within specs five, 10% ish. But we knew we're like, what if we get something heavier at all? Then we got to go sell that truck, get a dually, and that's why we got this one. Uh, not only was it within specs for the open range, it's you know it's within specs for this one. The girls are going shopping, grabbing a few things we got to get to get us through the night. And I'm here with a uh, with sassy pants. Oh wait, we are not staying the night here in perfect weather conditions where we didn't have to run the propane heat at all with the blower because of course we can't. We don't have this wired up for lithium. We don't have it wired up for solar. We don't have the plugs in this. Typically, when you buy an RV, motorhomes might have this sometimes. But typically, like your plugs are not going to be wired into an inverter at all. They are not going to work unless you're hooked up to shore power. Fireplace won't work. The microwave won't work. Now the fridge normally would not work, but they do go ahead and wire it up to an inverter. So if you stop somewhere like this or you've got a travel day, your stuff doesn't ruin in the fridge. But that's the thing too. Like we've only got two marine batteries right now. They can keep the fridge overnight probably if we had perfect weather and we didn't turn on the blower because it's so cold for the heat. But if we're trying to stay warm with the propane and the blower and plugging our stuff up and then the fridge is also pulling stuff off the batteries, I mean, that's a lot to ask. <laughs> so with the cold weather conditions and with the residential fridge and with our current setup, we're looking for electricity. I mean, we're looking for a campground. So we came in last night after dark and um, you don't really ever want to come in after dark. If you can, especially somewhere where everything is pretty much frozen. You can see this water spigot that the handles up. It handles up because the water's cut off at the campground and you have to fill up with fresh water as you come into the campground. Well, we didn't know where the fresh water was. We actually weren't even sure what site we had. So we're like driving around in the dark with this rig. You know, it's my goal to at least not damage this rig the first week we have it. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't have a lot of epic footage. All of my mental energy with us coming in late because I took some wrong turns in Cincinnati and went to the wrong place as well. So we're here. We got it parked. We got it set up. I meant to show you guys the first time I set it up, but um, this is, I did get some footage. This is the epic footage I got from last night and this is all I got. But yeah, <laughs> we're here. <laughs> what are you doing? Did you figure out how to work that? Did you find out that moves if you push the button or did you see something else under there? Looking at the motor. But the goal today, get from Cincinnati, which is kind of our midway spot over to Cookville, Tennessee. And then man, <laughs> kind of park it, relax for a little bit, get everything set up in here, get this feeling like home again. This is what we've been sleeping in. I call this our trash bag. It's actually a two person sleeping bag. I got a, uh, a deal on on Amazon. <laughs> it's not, it said it was down. It's the thinnest down. <laughs> Anyways, you get what you pay for, but um, it's been keeping us warm. It's been okay. So getting set up on our home base is always fun. <laughs> and when you look at this, you almost think, okay, that can't even come in here. Well, it did, we got it in here. Uh, the second hardest part though, is like just getting it in the right spot so that it works with our deck and these stairs. And I had to take these leg extensions, which come on these stairs, totally off of these stairs. I think they make a three-step version. And this has been bugging me since I have this. It's just barely unlevel on the solitude. And of course, because I can just feel it, it's, it's unlevel on the passenger side over here. So this passenger side, needs to come down, which means we basically have the choice. Do we get it perfectly level where it doesn't bother me and I don't think about it at all? Cause it's not gonna, it's not gonna affect the other. I mean, it's, it's just, it's minute. Or do we just leave it alone where we can use the stairs? 
So it's gonna really bother my OCD, but we're gonna leave it alone. <laughs> get the slides out, get set up, have a home. The other dilemma is to see if all these slides work without hitting anything. This one's gonna be close. So Marissa's gonna watch this side over here. I'm gonna let this slide out and hopefully we're good. This is the one I'm worried about. Other than this one slide, we should be good, so. All right, babe, going in. Oh yeah, we got, we got a good six inches. The slide's out, hooked up. I think we're home. This is uh, this is pretty awesome. See now, he came out here for you to go. <laughs> should I jump? You should totally jump. I should jump. <laughs> All I got is my tidy, uh, tidy blackies. So Nathan decided he's gonna do this thing. Go, Daddy, go! 